Bibbles. J Dog back to make another goddamn fucking video. Today's video is not doing questions though. Today's another uh, top fucking album list or favorites, best of the best, uh, greatest of all time, J Dog's favorites, whatever the fuck you want to word it or call it. Uh, and this one is going to be for Swedish death metal records. And I picked specifically picked out 16 of them. Why 16, J Dog? Why not 15 or 20? Because I came up with goddamn 16. I kind of stopped and like, yeah. At this point, I'm just kind of fucking picking shit. You know what I mean? I, I, anything after that. I'm, like, I'm just kind of like, yeah, it's not really at the top. But yeah, I like it. It's, uh, But I don't know if it would, you know, make it. So it's like, that, that, now you're just kind of just throwing shit in. So I stopped at 16. And uh, full disclosure, too, is uh, <laughs> there's probably, there's got to be, I did a harder uh, kind of like uh, uh, searching of my collection than I did on the uh, past uh, best ofs. But I'm sure, I'm almost positive I forgot something. Because I always fucking do. Like, for example, the thra the best of thrash video. I forgot Exodus Bonded by Blood. And that's definitely, definitely in my top 15. No doubt about it. And somebody said that. I'm like, oh, yeah, God, I just going through the collection. I mean, I have it. It's there. I got a CD. I have LP. I'm pretty sure I have a picture of that, too. CD and LP, for sure, I do own. Um, I might have a picture. Just got to look. Uh, but, yeah, that's one of my favorite thrash albums easily. As a matter of fact... Uh, the song, And Then There Was None, that's probably one of my favorite thrash songs ever written, ever. So, just totally forgot to goddamn grab it. And I probably would have, uh, probably would have also added to it if I was to go back and remake the video, which I'm not going to. Uh, I probably would have added uh, Witch Trap Sorceress Bitch and one of the first three Anthrax albums I would have put in there, too. Because those first three Anthraxes, I like uh, very, very much so. So, yeah, a few things get left off here and there, and, uh, the, the Exodus was an extremely obvious one because I just go, what I do is I just, I do my CDs because these CDs are easier to go through. And, uh, and I just go start at eight and I just like whoo, skim through, like not that quite that fast, but not far from it either. So it's easy to overlook something. And, uh, so yeah, that's what I did for this, but I did a couple, uh, takes and passes and I came up with goddamn 16 of them. And again, we know the goddamn rules. If you're going to make a fucking best of list. You better own the goddamn thing. You got to own a physical hard fucking copy format. I understand if like funds are tight and you can't buy everything, like everything you want to listen to, you can't buy. You're going to do a digital download or just listen on YouTube. I get that. You know what I mean? Because at least you can listen to music, right? But dude, if you're going to do a best of and it's your one of your favorites, you don't own it. Like, I mean, for example, I picked 16 albums. You wouldn't, it's not that, that's not that many. You know what I'm saying? It's not like we're talking about buy, buying everything currently that's coming out so take your goddamn shitty ass best of video if you're just flashing a fucking uh screenshot of that google search it means you don't fucking own it brah, brah. you better show me a fucking goddamn cd cassette or a goddamn lp picture disc anyways and this is a no order other than alphabetical order why because it's easiest for me to pull it that way it's easiest for me to put this fucking shit back in my goddamn rack uh that way uh you know, save the dog some goddamn time. Doesn't need any more extra fucking uh, video time than, than they need be. And uh, so, yeah, just alphabetical order. I think trying to think if there's any other disclaimers I need to make for the fucking dumb dumbs out there. Um, yeah, again, this is just kind of more so my favorites. Some of them are going to be obvious. Like, of course, that's in there. Um, uh, a handful of these, in my opinion, are, are non-debatable greatest. Other ones, you know, good. probably majority of them, I guess. You can uh, debate, but I'm just going by what, what the dog likes, what the dog listens to. He's not going to sit there and put a uh, mention theory in when it's not in there. I think I think theory wasn't overrated goddamn. Sweetest death metal band. I, I own the first record. think it's pretty good, but I think every single one of these I picked here smokes fucking theory. First on the goddamn list, a little bit of a goddamn education for people because most people will not know this one. Um, I found out about them when it was the Crip Records did the uh, double LP release. It was the album. The demos, so I own that uh, as well, and then loved it. Thought it was uh, great. And then when the CD, yeah, this this is a uh, Arsenal of Glory pressing uh, from Chile, two thousand six, and that is the band Authorize. To my knowledge, uh, this is the only full length they have, and this also has this bonus of the Morbid Fear demo. Um, I think they had two demos. But anyways, the uh, the the Crip Records release that came out before this, I'm trying to think when, maybe or maybe around that time. That's when I first heard them. I never knew who Authorized was. Uh, just great fucking band that uh, it's more kind of like 
look in this goddamn book of one minutes. Um, yeah, so they formed it. Arthur Roberts was formed in 1988 because this album was. What year did this album come out? 92, I thought. Maybe. But yeah, to my knowledge, it's the only album authorized did. And then I guess broke up. But yeah, but prior to that, just some demos. But does it say the year the album came out? I think 91, it looks like. It says copyright authorized 91. So yeah. But great album. More of a kind of a. I don't want to say US, but it doesn't sound like, you know, Carnage and fucking. Uh, the first, uh, first and tomb, dismember, shit like that. It's more of a little bit more, I guess, U.S., a little more brutal, for lack of better descriptions. But nonetheless, I, I thoroughly fucking love that goddamn record, and it made my goddamn top uh, 16. Talked about it before on this goddamn channel. To me, this is undebatable. This is in every fucking top Swedish death metal albums. And again, oh, yeah, no disclosure. This is death metal from Sweden. It doesn't have to have the Swedish guitar sound, per se. Just albums that came out, bands that came out from us, Sweden, that did albums. We're not talking demos and shit either. Some people are like, all right, well, the demo release better. I'm like, I understand that. We could do a demo one if you want or whatever, but our or if top favorite demos, which I probably will do that. That's some type of de demo video, whether it be a top favorite death metal demos, just favorite demos. Um, more than likely, I'll do something similar to that. But uh, this is just albums. So, yeah, got to clarify. Because, goddamn, some of the comments I see, whoo! There's some serious fucking trailer park bubbles out there. Uh, but this one, this, this is undebatable. This is, this is not even up for argument. Tape on that motherfucking mouth shut if you had anything else to fucking say. You're either old fucking goddamn geezer that doesn't like anything past 18, 1989. means you're fucking 54 or older and you've been buying shit since you were 13. You're either that camp, which they're the only ones that get a pass. Outside that, you're young, dumb, and don't get a fucking opinion. Just shut the fuck up. Tape on that goddamn mouth shut. This is definitely in there. It's not even debatable. It's not even a discussion. Carnage, Dark Recollections. Easily one of the greatest Swedish death metal albums ever recorded. Anyone with a brain, anyone in the fucking know knows. This was Michael Amat's band before he, uh, this, they just did this, some demos, and then, you know, disbanded, and he went on to join Carcass. And then it was all goddamn downhill from there. And after that, he did fucking Arch Enemy with his brother. And Arch Enemy, uh, I liked... I liked all this all the stuff pre chick. And it was more like kind of like a death rock band. You know, like uh that didn't that to me that's not really death metal. So I make the list. But Burning Bridges, I think, was the last one I liked. So the first three records, once that goddamn first goddamn uh ho bag got in the goddamn uh band, I thought that first album Wages of Sin was okay. Uh after that I thought it was terrible. Most of it I haven't heard, and now in the last 10, 15 years, that shit is just complete fucking cringe, goddamn embarrassing. Poser ass fucking fest. No way is that goddamn chick listening to metal. Oh, uh, that was one too. Didn't we mention Dark Carnage Dark Recollections? So she's Miss Metal Goddess, right? Whether she's her words or not. I'm not saying she said that, but uh it definitely gets tossed around like that in the scene. At least that's the vibe I fucking get. Again, I said in that video, dude, if Carnage Dark Recollections was on the player, and she walked into fucking Hell's Headbangers, that's what the dog's on the player. He ain't got no stupid-ass ZZ Top on. He's got fucking metal, brah, brah. And that would be one that would be on. So don't be shocked if you ever walk into Hell's and that's playing. Not, not guaranteed, but it'll be something of that nature. Real tunes, geese. Um, would she know? Would she be able to identify it? Hey, fucking Jenny, or whatever the fuck her name is. Who we listen to? I, I, I bet 10 grand of my own money. If she was completely unprepared of her fucking, uh, of that scenario, walking in, she'd get the answer wrong. I'd bet anyone 10 grand. I'm not even fucking joking. I'd put it in writing and sign it. If like she gets that answer right, she can answer, and nobody prepared it for her, I'll pay you fucking 10 grand. I'll cough up the dough. No doubt about it. Because I was like, I'm 100% positive I'm going to fucking win. <laughs> and um, I'd put fucking my house, my life, Lindsay's life, the entire fucking farm that she wouldn't know authorize. Fucking fuck no. So metal goddess my ass. Fuck out of here, brah, brah. Next one. A brutal one, goddammit. Not that the first two were pussy albums, but, uh, and again, non-traditional sweetest sound. Uh, there's going to be a lot of people that are like, oh, cool, he threw that in there. That'd be like, that's his favorite? Do you mind? The dog keeps it real. He doesn't backpedal and fucking, I Googled it. And, I mean, I YouTubed it, and that's what I listened to. I'm 19, and I'm pretending to like shit that I fucking don't, but I don't even own the goddamn thing. Just to fit in the cool club. I say what I like because that's what I fucking like. And the reason I probably like this one, and um, it's a toss up between this one and the self title, but it's probably this one because it's the first one I bought. But most people are going to say uh, the first two, rated X or high on blood. 
band, Deranged. This is the first CD I bought. I bought this from uh, Brian Baxter's uh, shop, Extreme Music. And I, and yeah, but this is probably my favorite, especially, yeah, yeah, Comp Compulsive Verge to Kill, which is fucking great. Um, so yeah, this is probably my favorite. But uh, this doesn't sound Swedish at all. This is, this is the Bernal Champ, brah, brah. Uh, to me, this is kind of like the band that pioneered the brutal scene in Sweden. Uh, I'm sure there's a few bands, if I, you know, uh, dig into a collection and shit like that, and stuff that I even own, that were before Deranged and maybe did a demo or something, but Deranged got pretty popular, and they did multiple albums. So it's like, yeah, some guy, other band did. It's like, okay, you did two demos, bro, and that, that was it. You were done. So it's like, Deranged stuck around. Now, also, too, you could say... Uh, what about Regurgitate, j Dog? I didn't even put Regurgitate in this entire thing. And if I did, it would definitely be the first album, Effortless Regurgitation of Bright Red Blood. But that is not death metal. I don't give a shit what any dumb dumb says. That is 100% pure gore grind. Um, not even grind core, gore grind. Now, the, Regurgitate definitely has some releases that, uh, which is kind of why I wasn't big on them, is it was more just straight up grind core. I'm like, man, what happened to the gore? I want to hear the gore grind. I don't want to hear just fucking grind core. You know, like the Gothic Lee's Napalm Death Phobia stuff. Uh, that's not what to me regurgitate was. Regurgitation was just nasty, dirty, disgusting. Just taking recap putrefaction, just trying to be grosser than that and, and shorter songs than that. Um, that's what they represented. So if I was doing it, you know, any just top overall albums out of Sweden, that might make it. And Woodford Gorgrind for sure. Top, if I do a top Gorgrind albums, that's definitely that's 100% of there. So you can already fucking uh, plan on that. Um, but, yeah, I decided Death Metal, so I didn't put it in there. Deranged, I consider just brutal Death Metal, not Death Grind. I mean, you can maybe a pinch of grind, especially on the first two albums, Rated X and High on Blood. Which don't get me wrong, I do like, I, I like actually every album by uh, Deranged, every single one of them. Um, even the last two, three records, when I first heard them, I'm like, eh, I don't know. I was like, some of the riffs kind of sound like later Cannibal Corpse, a couple parts sound like Dying Fetus. That's not Deranged. But it still had that deranged formula in there. And as I got to know the albums, I was like, I like them. I, I kind of didn't like the cartoony, fucking tooty fruity, fucking uh, box of fruity pebbles, fucking uh, uh, covers. They're kind of a little fucking silly for my taste, a little cartoony. Um, but I like, I, I like them. They're good. They're good records. Oh, well, check this shit out. Uh, just while I was talking about goddamn deranged, uh, I don't think it's announced on Hell's Sight, and it'll probably be by the time it's done and out. But we got approved. We got files. I think it's mostly laid out. So we're doing deranged. Uh, show the album. It's never been on fucking vinyl. Show the dog's personal goddamn CD. Show there ain't no poser shit over fucking here. This album, this was 2015 on Severed Records. I think it was 2015. Does it say the year on here? Sounds about around that era. The, the uh, Cut, Carve, Rip, Serve. We licensed this from... Uh, uh, Barrett over at Severed Records, I contacted him, and uh, he says we got all the files, band approved it too. Um, I was in contact with uh, the drummer Rickard. Um, what are we here? Because um, this one's never been on vinyl, and uh, Rickard said, uh, "Yeah, I'm up for you guys being able to do it." It's like, but Barrett owns that one. He uh, bought the, you know, bought all the rights, so you got the license from them, and uh, both parties agreed. Got shit. So this has never been on vinyl. But the dog, this was a dog setup. It now will be on Hell's Headbangers. And uh and it's a definite. Like I said, we actually got files on this dicking around bullshit. Uh they're pretty pretty goddamn, you know, Barrett was, you know, quick about it and quick responsive. And uh I know it's in our layout department and I know it's started or somewhat finished because I already saw saw parts of it. But it's on the release schedule because we're so backed up. It's either be towards the end of 2024 that it's actually physically out or beginning of 2025. So, just a little fucking goddamn fun fact there. Because, uh, like I said, I liked every deranged. I'm like, it's never been on vinyl. So, fuck, I would love to do it. You know what I mean? So, keep your eyes goddamn peeled for that in case you happen to give a fuck. If you like brutal shit, you like deranged. The brutal heads know what's fucking up. Again, the geezers, not so much. Is King Folly fucking buying goddamn that <laughs> deranged LP off hells when it comes out? About It's about as likely as fucking Jenny from fucking Arch Enemy or whatever the fuck her name is. <laughs> knowing Carnage Dark Recollections. Next to goddamn line. Uh, first two albums only for me. Swallow a Dick fucking uh, did swallow a goddamn dick. Um, comeback albums were okay, but it's kind of like, yeah, goddamn geezers trying to fucking uh, 
clear their name, in my opinion. But first album, especially the demos are great too. But first album, Desultory Into Eternity. You can only pick up one thing by Desultory. I would get this Into Eternity the album. That second album, Bitterness, it's definitely more watered down. Uh, I really like it. It's a good, just a melodic. They're kind of pulling, you know, the carcass and tunes and shit, more of that death and roll. But I do enjoy Bitterness. I think it's a very, very good, enjoyable record. Uh, but I wouldn't consider it just a straight up death metal. This is definitely, um, I'd consider this a straight up death metal, but with a lot of, I don't know, I wouldn't consider it melodic death metal, but it's definitely got a lot of, uh, definitely melodic parts. Um, the demos are great too. I have a boot of the demos on there, a boot CD with some demos and some bonus live tracks that came out not 20 years ago, but goddamn pushing it. Uh, those are good, but if I had to pick up just one thing, the debut album, Dust Story Into Eternity. This was what, 91? What year did this come out? I know it's early 90s. 92 at the latest, I'd say. Uh, record and mix at Sunlight Studio, August 1992. Yeah. So, but yeah, very, very good album. And the King of Kings is here. Again, non debatable. To me, the greatest fucking sweetest death metal album of all time. Again, slightly biased, but, uh, but sometimes facts are fucking facts. 19 year olds, tape on that motherfucking mouth shut. Just do yourself a favor. You look fucking stupid as fuck saying it. That album sucks. You, you look dumb as fuck, bro town. Just, 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 just let me do you a favor. Just bundle the fucking, just bundle those lips. Fucking Beetlejuice st style. <laughs> Strike. So that needs on that goddamn mouth. A little bias on this because it's the first Swedish death metal album, studio album that I bought. Most people's left hand path. Don't get me wrong. We, we know. We can already uh, spoil alert. Left hand path's coming. Uh, but my all time favorite, just remember, like an ever flowing stream. And look at those goddamn cigs. Got those on the hate campaign tour, brah, brah. Yeah, that's right. Didn't buy it on eBay like that. Actually met them. Got my photos with the guys and everything. See, this is what death metal looks like. This is the shit I'm talking about, bro towns. No, Sanguizio Bob, Frozen Soul. Uh, who, who's these other idiots that everybody likes? Uh, who's another popular one? Who, you know who you are. Take notes, goddammit. This is what a death metal image looks like. Mm hmm. Mm hmm. No homo, but goddammit, I'm getting a fucking boner. That screams death metal. Screams it. That's what I want to see when I look at an album, goddammit. Even on the back, when they're cleaning it up, still metal looking. Look at that. I see bullet belts. I see long hair. I see black clothes. I see inverted crosses. I even see a Morbid Angel logo tee, goddammit. Back when Morbid Angel was good. So I don't want to hear any fucking stupid shit. That's what metal looks like. Get to the program. They, they damn sure didn't say it fucking dismember. Only seen it once. Again, 2000 hit campaign tour. Bam! of an album. God damn. Probably one of the most underrated death metal albums ever in existence. Uh, Dismember hate campaign. It wasn't, give me some push-ups in the pits. I ain't death metal, brah, brah. The fuck out of my scene. You look stupid, you sound fucking stupid. Classic of classics. Again, tape on the mouth shut. You just sound stupid as fuck. Um, I, I, as a matter of fact, I never even met anyone that, that doesn't like this album. Again, sure there's some dumbass 19, 20 year old out there. Um, shit, even Paul Light, Levy likes this one. That motherfucker don't like anything. And two, Left Hand Path. It started it all, goddammit. I mean, it's just, I mean, this sounds just great. I mean, fucking, fucking Morbid Devourment, the title track, Rebel in Flesh, the Life Goes On. Look metal, too. Granted, we know they're a bunch of fucking posers. Uh, after this, they did one more death metal record, which, clandestine, I like it. Took me a little bit to get into it, because the vocal change. Uh, with no LG. Uh, but I do like it now. But Nicky Anderson and shit's putting out stupid fucking gay bar rock records and shit. This guy's a fucking poser. No doubt, no doubt about it. So, you know, looked metal, but you know, they were they were fakes. But nonetheless, when they are pretend pretenders of the throne, you know, put out one of the greatest, sweetest death metal albums of all time. So I give credit where credit is due. So it's not like they're completely fucking useless. Um so yeah. I've <laughs> Dude, you can't say you collect death metal and not have that in your collection. You just, you just, you just kind of can't. Here's a newbie one, <laughs> although been around since '92. Like fuck, you have. Uh, I like every album by them. The first four, it's hard to pick my favorite. It's probably if I had to pick a favorite, it's between the first album, which is what I'm showing, and the uh, third album, Raging Death. But for I, I heard this when it first came out. This is before they're on Metal Blade and everything. See, I even got the FDA. FDA uh, pressing. I have the original vinyl too. But that is Entrails. 
God damn it, it's got a sticker in there too. Uh, in Trails, Tales from the Morgue. Love the cover art. Love this album when it first came out. Um, it's a mix of fucking uh, the first grave, left hand path with a pinch of fucking uh, maybe more uh, guitar solos, melody. Um, very brutal. Uh, nothing original, but the songs were fucking great. Like I absolutely like uh, Euthanasia. I love absolutely love that song. Blood Red Voices. Those are probably my goddamn favorite. Um, very, very, very strong songs. Again, you put it on, and this album came out 2009. I remember when it came out. It came, it, this was just another random got them in trade from Hells from uh, was it FDA? Yeah, FDA because we do trade with them. Um, just a nobody band. The reason I checked it out, I'm like, look, you look like a see. This is what gets the dog attention. I'm looking. I'm like, oh yeah, that looks death metal. That's a cool cover. I like that. A good name. I was like, yeah, fits the bill, fits the mill. Like the title. Um, it's got the back, fits the feels death metal. I opened it up and uh see another you know, they got a lot they're using a lot of art too, which is cool. Uh the guys in the book looks fucking metal. I didn't see any sports jerseys or dumb shit. Cause sometimes you'll see a cover like this, you're like, yeah, it looks pretty cool. You open it up and you got a bunch of goddamn guys that got they're fresh off the core. I'm like, I'm turned off like a motherfucker. This is probably gurgle gurgle fucking post. 2006 Disgorge clone 10,010 with the worst goddamn trigger fucking drums with a bunch of goddamn homeboys in it. Not even interested. Um, so sometimes you'll get a kind of a cool cover like this that, that it could fit that too. But I'm looking, looking, checking. Fuck yeah, 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 yeah. Fitting the bill. So I'm putting this on. When I see some boring ass, stupid as fuck, blood ass nor or, or uh, who's, what's all these, these other hippie bands people like? Ruins of Everest. I'm not even interested. Why this is this is not calling the dog? Now, if somebody says, "Hey, recommends it to me," that knows me. That's fucking jams. Then I'll check it out. Somebody that knows my tastes. Outside that, I was like, I have no goddamn interest. Why? Why? Why would that be calling the dog? That ain't calling the dog for shit. That called the dog, and goddamn, it was a good goddamn call. Uh, again, it's nothing original. It is just more Swedish death metal, but banger as fuck songs. So highly recommend if you don't know the goddamn intros. Everything by them is good. But don't go up and pick the last album and be like, ah, it was kind of not as good. I don't think intros was that good, J-Dog. The, the, the last album, I like it, and I own it, and I bought it, but it's not as good as that. But you can't go wrong with them all the right way around. Um, again, classic of classics, undebatable. Shit, I'm going to speed through this. We're already past 20 minutes. Uh, this is uh, my disc as, you know, bonus. it's a double disc, actually, right? No, it's just two on uh, one disc. Uh, it's got the tremendous pain EP and shit like that. But uh, Into the Grave. Again, let, let, let's, let's spoil alert because, yeah, we haven't got to it. I mean, come on. Dude, when you're talking the greatest classes of classics, it's Dismember, Lake and Overflowing Stream, Entomb, Left Hand Path, Carnage, Dark Recollections, Grave into the Grave, and at least Where No Life Dwells. Those five are like the like the, the primos, like there's there's no there's no wiggle room with it. There's no there's no debating it. There's no let's let's talk about it. There's nothing to talk about, brah, brah. They're in there. When you're talking Swedish Death Model. Mandatory. This one, um, I had to put it in there. Uh, it's technically not an album. It's technically a 12-inch EP and then one an EP on top of it. But for years, my dumb ass, I, gosh, shit, I bought this when I was like 14 or so. Um, I just consider it an album. Just like Decrepit, Creation of Sin CD. Uh, the non-Cleveland guys, Dick in your, D Deer in Headlights, Dick in the Mouth. Definitely check that out. Absolute death metal masterpiece. That's the Creation of Sin 7-inch plus the demo. Um, I didn't know that. I had a CD. I just thought that was an album for, you know, as, as a little, I was a kid. You know, I'm literally 13, 14 years old when I bought it. And Balmer, There Was Blood Everywhere. It's technically, the There Was Blood Everywhere 7-inch on there, plus the Rotten Body Fluids demo on there. It was two recordings. So it's technically a comp disc. This next one is technically a comp disc. But me, I always, uh, since it was a full-length CD, I always considered it just a full-length. And technically, the band's never done a goddamn full-length. But this, smooth! fucking at the gates and don't even come over here asking me what about in flames what the fuck wimp about them this destroys them sends them home in a fucking body bag brah, brah. grotesque in the embrace of evil fucking love this this screams evil god damn it uh, blood runs from the altar and uh, probably ripped from the cross probably my favorite songs but it's goddamn tough uh, yeah, this has got some bangers of Tom Bangers. Church of the Pentagram. Woo! Smoking banger. 
but screams fucking evil, and then they put out that goddamn wimp fest fucking at the gates. Which talking about at the gates, full disclosure, I like the fucking poser trendy album, Slaughter the Soul. Uh, because it was kind of more like wasn't supposed to be like evil death metal. It was kind of like more of a commercial death thrash album that had goddamn catchiness fucking for goddamn dates. You know, there was more you know what I mean? It was just like memorable. Yeah, it was polished, it was overproduced, but I liked it just for a good, catchy, kind of aggressive death thrash record. At the gates, it was still supposed to be kind of like evil death metal, but you put it on, you're like, this is just lame and fucking boring. Was the red as the sky? Granted, to, to, to its defense, it's been years since I put it on, but I heard grotesque way before I heard that at the gates stuff. And I just remember, man, this is just lame. But again, full disclosure, I think the last time I heard that was like 15 years ago. So maybe I put it on now. I'm like, oh, this is actually pretty good. Because I have gone back to some stuff. That, for example, another one I've gone back to is Master on the seventh day, God Created Master, the second album Master put out. I've always liked Master to me. Um, getting a bit off subject, but eh, fuck it. A little education for the goddamn dumbass 19 year olds that have their head so far up the fucking ass. Things and Gwizzy Obama's the best thing since sliced bread. Uh, Master the best thing. There's a, uh, there was Displeased Records that put it out, and it's come out a couple other things, other a couple other titles like Unknown Soldier and shit. Well, my favorite release is called uh, Unreleased 1985 album. Death metal as fuck. Uh, it was just something they recorded. It never even came out. Raw as fuck sounding. Recording 85. You're the goddamn dog. Um, that's my favorite thing. And then the self-title by Master was really good. It had a lot of the same songs, but didn't have that grit. That just crude goddamn recording. But the self-title is great. Master on the seventh day, I always thought the songs were good. But I was like, man, these triggers sound like dog shit. But going back, I'm like... They didn't bother me as much. I'm like, the triggers, yeah, I can hear they're a little clicky, but I was like, this has some fucking good songs, some good sing-along catchy songs that you can almost get past it. So uh, going back to that, because I did like a few weeks ago, um, I, I can kind of overlook it. I was like, I'm, I'm enjoying this more than I did the last time. So maybe at the gates will be that. But still, Rob, come on. Uh, that ain't beating no goddamn grotesque. Anyways, next one, we already know this. Uh, First two albums, but probably uh, probably had if I had to pick one of the first ones, so I did. Hypocrisy, Penetralia. Death Metal as fuck, brah, brah. Don't even tell me you like Death Metal you don't know this goddamn album. Fucking masterpiece. From Sweden, sounds like kind of Scandinavian, European slash US. It's just what I mean by that is not your traditional fucking dismember buzzsaw and tomb buzzsaw guitar sound. Um, Love the goddamn vocals. That was uh, Caligula of Dark Funeral under his name, his real name, Macy or Mace, or I don't even know how to fucking pronounce it, but, uh, um, you know, the Swedish name, I can't pronounce it. My dumb, dumb fucking American ass. Uh, but nonetheless, uh, that was his death metal vocals, killer as fuck. And then, I don't know, he left, kicked out, whatever the case was, and um, joined Dark Funeral. And I like them on both. But that hypocrisy. Those first two albums. Again, that's more tape on the mouth shut. I don't want to hear anything fucking stupid. You look fucking Forrest Gump as fuck. It don't get much better than that, bro, town. That's a 10 of 10s. Here's another goddamn 10 of 10s. That's 95% that's of you don't fucking know. And the only ones that you kind of do know is because the few that are in the loop. And then the other fucking 10% is because you heard about it from me talking about them 10 million fucking times. And I busted out the picture of this too because this is what I grew up listening to always. It's Infest Dead. Two on one, but it's just, it's the album I had. It's the Hell Fuck Killing Christ, so basically two EPs, but this makes up like a 60-minute disc. But look how lame it is. Like, this is just fucking, just a logo on a blue fucking digipack. I bought this at uh, off blackmetal.com in, I don't know, two, that, probably 2000, 99, 2000, late 90s, early, early 2000s. But I also got this from blackmetal.com. Um, is the picture of this version of Hell Fuck Killing Christ. Hell fucks on this side. Look at that. That's what they should have used for the digipack. I always got a shirt of this too, of course. God damn it. God damn, that screams fucking metal. Does the Sanguizio ball sack got fucking covers like that? Shh. Highly fucking doubt it. Definitely ain't got the tune skis like that. And the back was the other Killing Christ EP. This is best DSI worship you'll ever hear in your goddamn life. It'll fucking just tear your nads off. So it doesn't sound Swedish at all. That's the, by, by the way, too. Uh, yeah, that's goddamn right. The dog said it. What about Roger Sanity, J Dog? What about him? Fans got a few good releases and they got some snoozy shit. But they do got some good stuff. Don't get me wrong. Didn't make the cut, though, as far as the top 16. But they do have some good stuff. 
Um, but I'm sorry. Best thing Dan Swano ever did. That's right. Send it to him too. God damn it. Infest dead. Best thing by a mile. God damn stone. Uh, the Jesus Satan full length's good too. And the last seven inch they put out was good too. But that, that CD and picture that I just showed you, that's the best. Hell fuck and killing Christ. Two EPs, two on one, both those that digipacks, two on ones. And then there's uh, the last thing that came out. Uh, Central media did a, um, that's, if you're going to get one thing, get this. Central Media put out a uh, double disc CD and a uh, double LP. I own both, of course. Uh, and it's everything they ever did. E everything. The two EP, the kill Hell Front Killing Crust, Jesus Satan Full Length, and the uh, seven, er like, every you'll have everything. So if you're only going to buy one goddamn thing, fun funds are tight, get that. Another one, people don't talk about. <laughs> I just saw people wearing the goddamn demo shirt, too, and it was not intentional. Uh, I just throw something on. Um, this is their, uh, the, I love the demos, uh, the Tales of Esteban, this is the Heaven, I have a shirt of both, this is uh, the Heaven Defied uh, de demo shirt, and I always have a Tales of Esteban. Love those demos, for years I had a bootleg LP, uh, just the two demos, and then it got, uh, was it Vic Records, did a compilation CD of those two demos, they have a promo, and then there's seven inch, all on one great fucking disc, Hells of Heaven on stock many times, I don't know if we still do, doubt it. Uh, it might be sold out now. Maybe we'll get a restock from Vic, but they came out a few years ago, uh, more than a few, probably like more like five, six years ago now. But uh, if you can find that, that's great. But uh, this is kind of out of print. This isn't even mine's a repress of a repress too. This is a Marquee Records version. This is their debut album, The Shadowland, and you never hear motherfuckers talking about this goddamn record. This album fucking smokes, smoke, smoke, smokes. It's got kind of like a metal slash punk slash kind of motorhead drum beats. Really fucking catchy. This fucking thing's catchier than goddamn COVID, brah, brah. And the vocals are are really, really good in the sense that also, too, it's the only other band that can compare the vocals to Hypocrisy. So if you want to know, like, the Caligula Macy guy or whatever, the album I just showed you, I'm not saying he sounds spot on like that, but it's very similar to that. Uh, and nobody else sounded like that. Vocals are fucking awesome on this. On the demos, especially like Tales of Esteban and shit, it was that really, um, they sounded different. They, they sounded just fucking inhuman. You know, what, what a lot of the demos did, um, just a lot of death metal demos, whether it be Nunslaughter, Rotting Christ demo, Future Faction, Painful Death demo, uh, Hell House, Peace Through Tyranny demo. You know what I mean? Things that were like, it, it probably wouldn't have sound like that if it wasn't because of the recording. Inverted's kind of in that camp. But this is a studio album, and uh, the songs are just like are, are jamming as a mofo. And as a matter of fact, if anybody you know these fools and the goddamn band, send them my way. Inverted, any of you guys. <laughs> guys that actually have files and shit. Don't just come in, yeah, I'm interested. You want to do stuff? If you got nothing to work with, don't waste my time. Don't waste your time. Email me, though. Service at hellsidebeggars.com. Jadaw wants to put this out on vinyl. To my knowledge, it's never been on vinyl. If it has, I've sure as fuck never seen it. And in which case, it's not around often. And again, the CD's long out of print too. I don't even think Hells has ever even had this on CD in stock. The answer never had an LP. Uh, but I want to do an LP. And again, these lyrics have never, at least I've never seen them. I checked the Metal Archives too. The lyrics have never been published. So I want to do an LP. So whoever you contact, if you contact me, you better have some goddamn lyrics. I want lyrics for this fucking thing. And I need files. I can't scan this and blow it up to an LP. It'll look like dog shit. I don't got files. Well, they don't contact me. Contact me with somebody that does. And you need to own the goddamn thing. Rights. No, I think I own it, but really fucking the label does, and they have it in writing. Show me who the point in the right goddamn direction. Dog wants to do on LP. Nothing fucking stupid sent over here. You don't know this goddamn album. Uh, go and Discogs and eBay it or whatever the fuck you got to do in the meantime, because this is a death metal juggernaut, goddamn it. Don't go to your grave without it. They have a second album after this, too. What is it? What is it called? I forget. I know what the cover looks like. Came out late 90s. Uh, I've heard it. I remember not being blown away by it. I remember being kind of traditional Swedish death metal, but I do want to get it. So if anybody has the second uh, inverted, I mean, to my knowledge, after that, they were done, uh, broken up and gone. So, you know, just, I don't know, fucking dead or in jail or not in the metal no more. Um, I would like to get a copy of that. So one of you guys can hit me up, or if I remember to, I'll just probably fucking Discogs, and I'm sure it's easy to get on Discogs. But uh, nonetheless, I would like to own the second album. So I remember being, it's been a while since I heard it. I thought, but uh, I, I remember not being nearly as good, but I remember being, you know, just good traditional uh, death metal, but who knows? Maybe I'll go back to it and it's fucking, it's like master. It's way better than I thought. Another one, uh, I learned about this from 
maybe it wasn't that. I was trying to think, maybe it was at the same time as Authorize and Epitaph and all that, when uh, Dark Symphonies put that out, or the Crypt, the content of the Crypt Records. I thought it was around that time. Uh, they, nonetheless, uh, the masterpiece. Uh, people will become in the last 10 years more than know. This belongs with the Carnage and shit. Only album they did, they did two demos too. The demos, are, this is a whole band where, you know how, well, at least I think so, a lot of bands' um, demos are better than their album. This exact opposite. Their demos were, eh, okay. I own them. I own them on a CD and an LP. But the album is where it's at. Calls from Beyond by Mega Slaughter. Um, absolute fucking, yeah, great, classic Swedish death metal album that never got the recognition of the uh, the, top, the, the big five of the Swedish. Death. Who's the big five, Jade? Oh, we're lying 10 minutes. I just fucking told you. Uh, another one which could arguably uh, surprise, it's technically didn't make in the big five, which is kind of surprising because it was before all that, maybe because it had thrash elements, but mostly death metal. And, uh, and by that definition, it's still goddamn death metal because like, you could argue, like, even Death, Scream, Bloody Gore is Death Thrash. It has thrashing parts. This is around that time. This is, what, 87, I think, this album? And it was, uh, what, the first release that uh, Euronymous put out? But this thing just has a, is aggression for days. The band Merciless, The Awakening. They had other albums, and I remember hearing them thinking they're okay, but I will say this. Uh, I remember Merciless being the, that band where their other albums are, like, pretty good metal albums, but goddamn, remind me of Default High. Everyone thinks that I hate the other Neatfelheims. I'm like, I think I own the second album for sure on LP, original LP too. Uh, I think I might even own the third one. I didn't. I thought everything by Neatfelheim was solid metal. It's just, it was just so goddamn tame and fucking just watered down compared to that first one. The first one just had that savage fucking aggression. Just It just had pure fucking hate and emotion. They just felt like, kind of like what I always felt like with Deicide. Like they just went in the studio and they're just like Glenn Benton was just pissed off. That's how I felt like with the first Nephilim. They just felt like aggressive and mad. And then the other ones, solid metal, but just kind of like, I don't know, almost like they started smoking weed or stuff. And they're just laid back and they just lost the fucking hate, lost the aggression. That's how I always took it. Uh, that's a bit merciless even more so. I remember there's that Unbound album and stuff you put on. And you're like, it's pretty good, bra, bra, but where's the cojones compared to The Awakening? So this is, yeah, this is technically... This is before Left Hand Path and shit. So a lot of people say, oh, the first Swedish death metal full like that was Left Hand Path. Eh. I, I get the argument and you could debate it all goddamn day long, but technically, technically, it's probably goddamn uh, Merciless the Awakening. And then when you go by demos and shit, one of the first death metal bands ever, as far as demos, it's probably Mephisto. Uh, they did those because the one first demo was 86. But you know, a lot of people don't know this too. Uh, you could argue Grave, because Grave was initially called Corpse. Corpse did one demo, and that was in 86 as well. So that well, when I say 86, the reason being is because like um, the uh, most people uh, credit Nihilist, pre Entombed. Those, those demos were 87. So Mephisto, for example, was uh, before Nihilist. It's technically so was Grave on the Corpse demo. The only reason, and if, I don't know if you know the story, the reason they uh, changed their name from Corpse to Grave is because I think it was the bass player. It was one of the guys, Ola and Jorgen, they wanted to get rid of. They didn't think he was good enough or had a feud or whatever. And they even admit, it's like, we were just too childish, too young to fucking, uh, didn't have the balls to kick him, kick him out. So they just told him, ah, we don't want to do this no more. We're going to break up. They just started a new, we're going to just start a new band. They just start, called the Grave. It was the same goddamn band. Um, so a little fucking fun fact. So technically you can argue that that's kind of like the first death metal that was coming from there, demo-wise. In case you didn't know that. Uh, another fucking great one. It's kind of a Death and Black album, but I put it in there. They definitely became more black metal, because I'd say this is more of just a straight-up uh, death metal album, but with black and elements and a little bit on the darker side. Um, do I like it as much as goddamn Like an Ever-Flowing Stream? Not even close, but it's still a goddamn masterpiece, and I do like it very much. So, and to be honest, usually when I listen to them, it's primarily just this. This is another band. I thought their demos were kind of boring. I have them. I got to go back and listen to them. There's that Satanic Blasphemy disc that has them. Remember the, just being bored by the demos, which usually it's the other way around. The demos are the fucking best. But that is uh, Necrophobic, Nocturnal Silence. This is their debut album. It's definitely fucking great. Every then the Necrophobic's pretty solid. You know, they got the, the, uh, the what is it, Third Antichrist? That's probably what I listen to most. That's definitely much more black metal. There's Blood Hymns. That's good. 
Dark Side. Um, I can't say I've heard their last one or two records, but I'm sure it's I'm sure it's solid shit. Um, but this is this is the this is the best stuff. In my in my in my goddamn opinion. Again, but even this, yeah. Do I like it as much as Dark Recollections? No. Do I like it as much as uh, uh, Dismember and Tomb? No. But it's but it's definitely uh, um, Death Metal Mandatory one. I would say. And then last, and I like this more than on uh, uh, Necrophobic as well. Um, this is the CD. I've owned this one since I was 14 as well. I remember specifically buying this and loving it. And specifically what I loved about this at the time when I bought it was the vocals. Because at that age, 14, you got to remember, I already owned some Mortician, some Deicide, some Cannibal Corpse, uh, Suffocation, Human Waste. And it was all, you know, the low growling vocals, right? When it came to death metal. This was the first thing where it was, with the exception of Alters of Madness, because I had that too. This was outside, you know, this and then Alters of Madness were like, oh man, they're great, awesome death metal vocals, but it's not a growl. And it's not black metal either, because I like black metal. I was like, it doesn't sound like, the, you know, the high pitched scream, black metal. I was like, it's in between, but I was just like, it just sounds fucking killer and refreshing. That is Unleashed, Where No Life Dwells. Again, the only album I like by the band, the demos are great too, uh, but this is, I, the demos are great, but the, the album's best. But again, I did hear the album first, so maybe that's why. But specifically, like when I heard some other Unleashed stuff, what I didn't like about it is just what I was saying earlier, is that what stood out to me at 14-year-old buying this that I love so much was uh, Johnny's vocals. And then, I remember hearing the second album, or maybe it was the Shadows. Which one's which one's the second or third album? I think it was the Shadows in the Deep. Um, and I'm like, what man? Well, dude, the, you could tell it's Johnny. I was like, well, it's kind of like Nivelheim again. Uh, it was like it's just it's just weak. It's watered down. I was like, well, uh, man, I don't. It's like it doesn't suck. It's got catchy parts here and there. That was nothing. I mean, with this, I mean, <laughs> dude, if they had eyes. Fucking violent ecstasy. That's how you uh, announced it on the demo, live demo, in case you don't have, for the guys that don't fucking know. But they did uh, two, like, I guess, studio demos, garage demos, and a live demo. That's how he introduces violent ecstasy. Uh, this is one for those that don't turn the other cheek. Um, Dead Forever is probably the opening song after the intro, is probably my favorites. Um, but yeah, If They Had Eyes is fucking great. So yeah, my favorites would definitely probably be favorite songs in here. Dead Forever, Violent Ecstasy, If They Had Eyes, and probably Before the Creation of Time. But masterpiece of an album. So not only are Johnny's vocals sick, but dude, wrist for days. Like just those heavy punch and fucking just grab you by the goddamn fucking throats, you know, riffs. Uh, even on the first listen, at least. But again, maybe slightly unfair because I was, I was 14, so everything was fresh and new. So, but I don't know. I don't know. I, I, I would like, I, at least I'd like to think if I never heard this, if I passed me now, I knew every, all the music I know now with the exception of this. And I just picked, there's a super late to the game. I just picked it up today. I'd like to say it grab me by the throat just as well. I think there's no way that I wouldn't like it and be like, holy shit, I need to buy this. I, I, would, I would almost have to say for sure. 1991 is when it came out. Um, if I had to do a top 10, like if I had to chop this down, this would definitely be in there. Um, so yeah, you know, this is another non-debatable one. A couple of those you could debate. Um, fine, but the, some of those are non, non, absolutely non-fucking debatable. And that, and that is goddamn one of them. So if you don't know that, or if you know some Unleashed, but you don't know that one, you're missing out. Where no life dwells, that's the one you goddamn fucking need. So that's all of them, goddammit. This video went pretty goddamn long. Uh, put your goddamn tops in there. Let me know which one's J Dog. You're a fucking idiot for putting that one in there. And also, too, let me know which J Dog. You're a fucking idiot for leaving such and such out. Uh, maybe it was one of them that I forgot. But again, so much. Like, dude, this is not that fucking great. Again, like I said, like, uh, just because, it, like, for example, like Carbonized, I didn't think their album was that awesome. I just didn't. That was, but that was a classic one that came out of time. Farian was another one. There was a, there was a handful of bands. Don't just be cooked because it was 91, 92. That doesn't mean it was fucking great. Because it was one of the early pioneers. That doesn't mean just because it was 92, it was better than goddamn entrails. Not, that's not how my goddamn brain works. It was my, how's that? I saw fucking tunes. But feel free, put them in there. It is possible that uh, something I overlooked. 
Uh, cause again, I just scoured my CDs. It's possible that it's something I have and I maybe just have an LP of it. I'm like, fuck. Um, I was like, that is one of my goddamn faves. So put it in there and then I will, uh, maybe comment on that. But, uh, outside that, yep. Yeah, if you don't like that goddamn list, then you can put up your video, make it up your own goddamn list. So put it in the comments later, goddamn it.